Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at some of the details that led to the finish in the Herbert Burns versus Daniel Pineda fight at UFC 252. Now this was a great fight between two high level grapplers and uh, yeah, let's get started. So this whole exchange that they get into here is going to get kicked off when Herbert Burns fires a nice right hand right down the center and it lands on the chin of Daniel Pineda and snaps his head back. Boom, see that? Now, this the fact that it snaps his head back definitely aids Herbert Burns here, and that punch had some pop on it, but this is a setup for a takedown, guys. Notice how as soon as Herbert Burns throws it, he's changing his levels, or he's changing his level, taking a big lunging step with his right leg, and he's going to weave that right leg around the legs of Daniel Pineda and then drive through off his left leg to complete the takedown here and come up on top and or in half guard, right? Cinches it up a little bit. And he immediately weaves his right arm underneath the head of Daniel Pineda. Now, two things going on here, kind of. Let's focus on the fact that Burns just kind of weaved his arm under the head of Pineda first, right? What that's going to allow Burns to do is start applying shoulder pressure into the chin of Daniel Pineda. That'll force Pineda to look to the right-hand side of our screen. And that's because... If Pineda wants to create any sort of angle here and get any sort of space, he wants to get his hips out to the right, right? In order for him to do so, he's going to have to be looking to the left, right? His head's going to have to be lined up with his body. Like, if he's looking to the right, he's not going to be able to hip escape that way as well, right? So he needs to be that, – that, that's aiding Herbert Burns here. But what Burns is also doing, the second thing that I wanted to mention, is he's got his head across the body – and underneath the right arm of Daniel Pineda. And what that's preventing Daniel Pineda from doing is digging for that underhook on the left-hand side of Herbert Burns' body, right? Because right now, Daniel Pineda is on the bottom of half guard, and Herbert Burns has his left leg in between the legs of Daniel Pineda. And what Pineda wants to do is get an underhook on the same side that he has half guard established from the bottom, right? So Burns is tying him up two ways here. He's forcing him to look in the direction that he doesn't want to look, right? And he's using his head as sort of an underhook that's preventing Pineda from digging for his own underhook, right? So two things going on here. And you guys are going to get a – I'll fast forward a little bit because they stay here for a while. But right here, right here you get a really good view of the shoulder pressure. Do you guys see how Herbert Burns is really digging his shoulder into the chin there, Pineda? Pretty soon here, though, Burns is going to start looking for some offense, right? He's going to look to throw a punch right there. And there's a – do you guys see that little triangle of space that opened up? in the crease of Herbert Burns' elbow, right near the ear of Daniel Pineda. Do you see how also the shoulder pressure is now alleviated and Pineda's chin is squared back up with his body? Pineda is going to use the small window of opportunity, move his left hand down to the hips of Herbert Burns, and he's also right now, he's got a hook, guys, established with his right leg inside of Herbert Burns' left leg. So he's going to use that hook, his left knee kind of in the crotch of Burns and that left hand and the underhook that he has established on the right-hand side of our screen, all this he's going to use in his favor right now. He's got it set up to get elevation on Herbert Burns' hips. See right here, he elevates. And right when Herbert Burns' hips get to the highest point, Daniel Pineda withdraws his left leg and look, he establishes a sort of butterfly guard here. Now Burns does a good job of maintaining his posture and everything and he starts to posture up, right? Looking to throw punches, and Pineda looks to maybe jump a triangle or something here, but you're going to see, and this is just, open guard is so much harder to play in MMA because right there, he just got punched in the face, right? And your consequences in sport jiu-jitsu just aren't as dire, right? And in MMA, if you're going to play open guard, it has to be a little bit more honest and a little bit more secure if you're going to be successful. Burns is going to control both of the legs here, toss him off, to uh, Daniel Pineda's left-hand side and throw a big punch here. Boom. Pineda's going to try to use this opportunity of Burns exploding down towards the mat to escape, and he starts to come up to his knees. Now, Herbert Burns is looking to sink his right hook in here, but Pineda does a good job of recognizing it, basing up with that right foot, see it, and beating the hook of Herbert Burns. He withdraws his elbow to his knee, and then he starts to stand up, and he's going to try to peel Burns off him. He's going to try to turn back in towards Burns as he stands up. Burns does a good job of maintaining the control, though, here, and isolating the right leg of Daniel Pineda and kind of triangling it up. Now he switches his grips off, and it's kind of hard to see, guys, but he weaves his right arm behind the head and over top of the left-hand shoulder of Daniel Pineda. He then connects... He connects, he, he takes his left arm 
and weaves it underneath the left arm of Daniel Pineda and then connects that grip there. And, like, you guys see how all of Daniel Pineda's weight is over top of his left leg right now? Now what Herbert Burns is going to try to do is he's going to kind of just rotate his right shoulder back toward us and kind of fall to his left hip and kind of drag Pineda's upper half towards the leg that he has isolated to complete this takedown. Watch. See how he just kind of falls to his left hip towards the leg that he has isolated? He falls towards the side that he has. He's controlling the base of Pineda on one side, and he falls towards that side, right? Now, Pineda, though, does a good job here, and we're going to have a better view in a second where this becomes a little bit more obvious. Right here. A lot of the times when Herbert Burns gets into this position, his opponent's hips are on top of his own hips, and that aids him a little bit because he's then able to work to take the back. See, like right here, what Herbert Burns probably wants to do is start to pull Daniel Pineda up on top of him to the left-hand side of our screen and look to sink the other hook in and take his back, right? But what's preventing that is the fact that Daniel Pineda's ass is on the ground right now, guys, and his right arm is free. So if Burns just tries to drag him to the left-hand side of our screen right now, Bert, Pineda's going to be able to get his elbow in between himself and the body of Herbert Burns, and he's going to be able to get it to the mat and create a wedge there, and it's going to be very difficult for Burns to take the back from here. It would be preferable for Burns if Pineda's, sticks, if Pineda's hips were stacked on top of his own a little bit. But Pineda's going to do a good job. He's just hammering these elbows in here too, guys. Pineda's just going to do a good job of keeping his hips to the mat and looking to slowly escape his hips out toward the right-hand kind of our screen, kind of in the direction of that Modelo sign that you see there. And you'll see that he's just patient with it. Slowly, he's not giving up position here, right? Keeping his hips square underneath him, and he just slowly escapes them whenever he gets an opportunity. You'll see him scoot him out. Working to deal with the legs here of Herbert Burns. And again, they stay in these positions for a while. See right there, he scoots him out a little bit, and he just stays patient, right? Controlling the arm that Herbert Burns has draped over top of him there. And again, just digging that in. And look, scoots away again. And now look, do you guys see how we were talking about earlier? How Daniel Pineda wants to be able to... He, if Herbert Burns tried to take the back too soon, Pineda would get his right elbow to the mat. Well, now that Daniel Pineda has his right elbow to the mat, the, the taking the back for Herbert Burns here isn't really going to be a viable option anymore because of that wedge, that barrier that Pineda's placed there. So Burns is going to do a good job recognizing that. And again, guys, I'm just trying to fast forward to speed up the pace of the video a little bit. There's a lot of nuance here, but Burns is going to recognize that and just give up on the back take and instead come up on top. And now when he comes up on top here, guys, he's in an advantageous spot because he's also got the cage aiding him now. Do you guys see how Pineda, if he tries to escape his hips away from us, it's just going to run into the cage? Burns is going to take... He's going to take advantage of this and just, look, again, I'm fast-forwarding through some of this stuff, but look, maintains good pressure there and just slowly works his way into mount. And do you guys see how he's implementing the shoulder pressure again? And it's a double whammy for Pineda now because now, even if he wanted to escape his hips that way again, they're going to run into the cage, right? What Pineda does here, though, guys, is he does a good job of staying patient. And one thing that I want to point out really quickly is that if you watch the first round of this fight, when Daniel Pineda was on top, he was dealing damage and throwing constant volume, constantly throwing punches and shots at Herbert Burns, right? Notice how when Herbert Burns is on top, he's much more focused on control, right? Much more focused on establishing these positions and progressing through them, right? Whereas Pineda was much more focused on doing damage. Just wanted to point that out before moving forward. Now, they get into this kind of battle again where, I mean, Burns essentially has Pineda mounted here, right? I mean, Pineda's in a bad way, and again, he keeps applying that shoulder pressure, but there's going to come a moment here where Herbert starts to look for some offense again and see, see the shoulder pressure there that he's utilizing, and he's kind of got the legs, both of the legs of Pineda triangled up here. I mean, Pineda's in danger of being mounted, and in a, in a sense, he kind of is mounted here, right? Burns just hasn't released the triangle of the legs and slid fully up in the mount yet, but he's in a bad way. And they just kind of, right here, the pressure starts to alleviate just a little bit and you'll see that every time, right here, here's the opportunity. Do you guys see how as soon as the shoulder pressure alleviated, look where Herbert Burns' hands are right now, right? His hands are on the mat. He, now Pineda has managed to get both of his arms underneath the arms of Herbert Burns, right? He's going to move his arms to the hips, and he's going to use his arms here 
to get elevation again. And do you guys see how he creates just a little bit of space? Now it's not perfect, but it allows him to get out of a bad spot, right? Now he's going to look to start escaping his hips now that he's created some space away back towards the Medela sign, back towards the cage. But Herbert Burns is going to do a good job of not letting Daniel Pineda's legs get outside of his left leg. See how he keeps it there? And he kind of steps up into him and establishes an underhook on Daniel Pineda's right arm. But as Pineda stands up here, Pineda's going to rotate his hips underneath the hips of Herbert Burns and look to hit a hip toss, right? Pineda's going to step out with his right foot in front of the right foot of Herbert Burns. And look, guys, right here he's trying to catch the left leg of Herbert Burns and get more elevation with the hips, and that might help him in completing this. The cage is going to cause some issues either way, but he misses it. Doesn't get the elevation he wants, but still, I mean, nice attempt, right? And again, some high-level high level grappling exchange is going on here. Now, Herbert Burns is in a position where, look, Pineda's on top of him, and they end up in this spot where Pineda's in danger of getting his back taken. Herbert Burns is going to weave his right leg underneath the leg of Daniel Pineda and extend it. Look, kick it out. Now that he's extended it, he's going to look to cinch up a seatbelt grip here, fall to the side, and as he does so, sinks that hook in, right, on the right-hand side. Now, what Daniel Pineda does is immediately starts fighting the hands two-on-one, and he does the right thing here, guys. He looks to start getting his shoulders to the mat and changing the angle because what Herbert Burns wants to do right here is lock up the body triangle. But in order for the body triangle to work, see how he's trying to lock it up? In order for the body triangle to work, Daniel Pineda's hips need to be parallel with the shin, of Herbert Burns. If there's an angle there and they're perpendicular at all, it's going to be very hard for Burns to lock the triangle up. So Pineda's doing the right things here, right? He gets two on one on the left wrist of Herbert Burns, and he's going to start moving that wrist back above his head. See? Behind his head. And he gets his shoulders to the mat. And do you guys see how that angle, it's not, do you guys see how Herbert Burns is not able to lock the triangle up, the body triangle, because he doesn't have an angle on the hips? That slight angle is what's preventing him from getting that, right? And Pineda gets his shoulders to the mat. And now look what he does, guys. He establishes a frame with his right forearm against the face of Herbert Burns and starts pushing his face away, okay? What that's going to do is as Burns tries to rotate his hips and come up into mount here, it's going to – Pineda's just going to keep extending that right arm further and further away, see, and keeping Burns' head – out away from his base. Everybody says that this is a 50-50 position, right? But what, what Daniel Pineda did right there is he made this his position. He extended Burns' head out away from him, created a nice frame, and now he's going to bring his hips underneath him and spin. Look, into the guard of Herbert Burns. Reverse his position and ends up on top. Pushes the left leg down, passes over top. And we talked about this earlier, guys, about how Herbert Burns is a guy who, when he gets into this position, he looks to implement control, whereas Pineda is more about volume. Look at how Pineda immediately starts raining down shots, guys. Boom, 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 over and over and over again, right? And look what it causes Herbert Burns to do. It causes Herbert Burns to worry about the shots that are coming, right? And what that's going to do is because he's so focused on getting punched in the face, it's going to open up passing opportunities because Herbert Burns isn't going to be able to use his arm there to prevent the knee of Daniel Pineda from sliding through. So while his arms are occupied, while Herbert Burns' arms are occupied here, see how Pineda sneaks his right foot over top of the left thigh of Herbert Burns, and he's going to look, look, he's going to hit like kind of a knee cut pass here, right, and end up in kind of the side control position. He's beating the hips of Herbert Burns. Now Burns is in a bad spot. Pineda does a good job of controlling him, applying pressure here, and when this oper when Burns reaches out to control the right wrist of Daniel Pineda, Pineda is going to step over top of that arm with his right leg and trap it there and kind of staple it down to the ground. See how it kind of acts as a staple? And now Herbert Burns is in a bad way, guys. The upper half of his body is getting controlled, and as he squirms here, his arm kind of falls into this position where Daniel Pineda's got him in a crucifix. And look how Pineda's also got his head to the mat, and he's controlling the right arm of Herbert Burns. Now, the one thing that Herbert Burns has free is the lower half of his body, his hips, right? He can still move those, and what he might want to look to start to do here is hook the left leg of Daniel Pineda with his right leg from right here and then start to maybe try to peel 
Daniel Pineda off, if that makes sense, right? But the crucifix is no fun to be caught in. It's a hard position to escape. You got to remember that he got beat up for most of the first round from, from the bottom, right? Like Daniel Pineda, like I said, he got on top and getting beat up from that position will wear you out, man. And I know I'm fast forwarding through some of those guys, but look, again, using that head against the mat, to isolate that right arm and just trapping the left arm with his legs, constantly keeping control, constantly readjusting, and a lot of nuance going here, guys. And Burns trying to escape, trying to bridge. Another thing he could do is maybe bridge back in towards Pineda and try to buck Pineda towards us, maybe clasp his hands together then, and then try the same thing again, try to buck back into him again and just try to create some sort of space. I, there, there are different avenues you can take, but you guys all know how it feels when you're, if you've done jujitsu or any type of grappling, how it feels when you're tired and you know what you should do, but it's just overwhelming and your body can't perform sometimes, right? And that's kind of what's happening here to Herbert Burns, and he's just getting beat up from this position. And after a while, you know, it becomes obvious, I think, to the referee that he's he's not getting out of here, right? Like, he's definitely taking damage with the elbows. Like, that's not going well for him. It's not the most, like, devastating thing that you've ever seen in the world, but Herbert Burns is just, he's not doing anything to make the position, he's not doing anything to change his position, and he's getting overwhelmed, and the elbows are definitely coming down, and the referee puts a stop to it, right? And uh, this was a great performance for Daniel Pineda. I mean, he's going up against Herbert Burns, the younger brother of Gilbert Burns, who's making a real fucking surge through the welterweight division right now. Uh, just beat the hell out of Tyron Woodley. So this was a big win for Pineda, a guy who's a veteran. I think this was the 19th submission victory of his. This wasn't a submission, I guess, right? But it, it felt like one almost because he, he he implemented his, his game plan on the ground against a high-level grappler in Herbert Burns. So it was an impressive win and uh, a big win for Daniel Pineda. And good to see him back in the octagon and successful. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I know this was kind of a long one. And like I said, a lot of nuance in this and a lot of things that I probably skipped over for sake of trying to, you know, condense the video a little bit. But, I, I mean, just a really, a really impressive performance from Daniel Pineda. If you guys like what you saw, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and uh, I will catch you later. Thank you again for tuning in. Bye-bye.